Hello, I'm Cody Whipple with the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. Today, I'm currently on site in Cambria County on Little Chess Creek. There's currently a stream habitat project going on, and I'm joined by a very special guest, Mark Saucer. Mark is a stream habitat section chief, and in this video, he's going to explain to you a little bit about what exactly is going on today, some of the missions, and some of the goals they're trying to achieve with this stream habitat project. Hi, how you doing? Um, again, we talked about, it took us about a year and a half to get to this point right now from the planning aspect, and now this is us implementing our project now. And behind me right now, we have machinery working. It's a mini excavator. They're putting some logs in the stream right now, and they're, gonna, they're, they're building a modified mudsill device. And the beauty of that modified mudsill device is, is we're trying to protect the landowner's bank right now from erosion and sedimentation issues from getting into the stream. So we're gonna stabilize that bank with our logs that we're putting in. And the habitat value we're getting out of this structure is it's gonna provide nice stable overhead cover for the trout so they can get underneath those logs and they'll feel safe from predators. Habitat's the key. I mean, if we wanna keep fishing and we want fish to stay here, we need to put the habitat in. So behind me again, it's we're, looking, we're working with the local contractor from the area. We're working with the landowner, Protect the Bank, and also we have the Cambria County Conservation District. So throughout the, throughout the state, implementing these projects, we're, we're, we're involving the, the local conservation districts, we're working with regional DEP, and the landowners, as you can see one behind me, and the local contractors. Awesome, thank you very much for that, Mark. So you mentioned that you're, you're placing these logs in the stream. Uh, when it comes to selecting a type of log or a type of tree that you're going to use, do you find that there's a specific type of log that works best for these projects? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we want to use native species. Uh, we found out through research the aquatic organisms that we're trying to protect and enhance, they favor native tree species. Uh, so most of our projects, hemlock is a readily available tree throughout the state. Um, it's, it's native, it's very easy to work with, and we also work with larch logs. Um, it's just another type of conifer. Larch is all on its own, so to say. It's a deciduous conifer, so there's an education about the type of material we're using. So we're getting the benefits of that, that log, the aquatic organisms, they'll, they'll be able to burrow into those native logs, they feed off of those logs, they'll, they'll grow and populate, and therefore they'll provide more food for our fish. And again, it's, we're providing habitat for the fish as far as structure, but we're also trying to enhance the amount of aquatic organisms so now they have a place to eat and they can stay here and utilize that habitat all at the same time. Thank you, thank you. So when we were talking about the whole planning process involved with uh, projects such as this, um, how did you go about determining the best locations to place these habitat structures? Well, the best location is, again, we have to work with the landowners. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's great for us to be able to work with these local landowners. Um, people can actually come back here and, and fish now. And placing these structures, we're trying to do the best as far as bank stabilization, but also get as much fish habitat out of it as possible. So there's areas of highly eroded stream banks. We have certain habitat structures that, that will utilize uh, the best ways to stabilize that bank and put the habitat in. Uh, a lot of stream sections, we lack pool habitat. Pool habitat is slower moving water, deeper water, and those are refuge areas in, in the summertime for these fish to stay. So again, we're, we're trying to pick out as much habitat as possible. Um, we can't have pools everywhere um, because we also need a, some ripples Ripples are fast-moving, oxygenating part of the water. We need oxygen for the fish to be able to stay there. That's how they breathe. And we also need some runs. Uh, runs are, is an area where it's not as oxygenated and is not as fast-moving as a riffle, but it is also uh, fast-moving water that the fish really like to utilize as feeding opportunities. So they need the riffles for generating oxygen. They need those runs to be able to feed in those zones easily, and then they need that pool habitat as areas where they could drop back in the pool, slow moving water, they can be at a, a calming state of a rest, kind of like us falling asleep at night. They want to feel secure in there, and it's also a great place for them to refuge over some severe drought situations that we currently have in 2020. 
Thank you, thank you. Um, so what are some of the tools that you're using to accomplish this project today, and why are we using those tools specifically? So we have several different types of tools. We have some large equipment. We have a, a mini excavator behind me, and right now what he's tasked to do is to actually dig trenches uh, for our habitat structures. Trenches are simply just areas where our logs are, in, are getting it anchored into the bank. So he has to dig those holes out for us. And the other thing he's doing is we're using 20 foot length logs. I mean, these are almost full sized trees, so to say. And uh, he's able to pick these logs up very easily, manipulate them how we need to go to generate that best habitat we can. Um, that's the heavy machinery. We also have to use some chainsaws. Uh, chainsaws right behind me that's running right now, that you can hear. Um, they have to physically cut and, and, and shape that log to fit in perfectly how we need it to, to provide the best stable bank and the best habitat again. Uh, once we get that log cut into place how we need to, we anchor those logs into stream bottom using rebar. Well, we first use a gas powered drill. So the drill, drills a hole through that log so we could anchor that log with four foot rebar lengths. Um, we also use two foot rebar lengths when we're anchoring logs to logs. Um, from there, we also use sledgehammers yet. So there's a lot of manual labor involved. Uh, once, once we get that rebar through, we have to sledgehammer it down and we, we bend it over. It's kind of like a staple. So, it, so it's very secure and stable part of the structure, stable part of log to log and so on. Thank you. Thank you, thank you again, Mark. So um, once, this, once you're concluded with this project and it's all complete, what is something that you do to determine that it's actually doing what you want it to do, that it's actually accomplishing your mission? Yes, we do some visual surveys. We have a, a visual survey that we do before and after, and a lot of that visual survey is looking at how stable are the banks and how much habitat is already here before we tried to enhance it. So we determine the limiting factors of this section of stream as far as stability, sedimentation issues, that riffle run pull regime, and how could I create the perfect riffle run pull regime in this section. And, and from there, when we built that, we pick out those devices and we accomplish that goal, we could come back later and do another visual survey to see if these structures are working properly. In some instances, we actually do an electrofishing survey. Electrofishing survey is just, just a very moderate stun to the fish that we could actually scoop them up with nets, take the samples, and then return them back safely into the stream. So by doing that, we could see if the number of fish and even the number of fish species have increased. Um, there's other surveys we do for aquatic organisms. We do kick neck sampling. It's, we're just kicking up those rocks and those riffles and seeing what other aquatic organisms we found and before and afters if if, if we produce more more aquatic organisms again it's it's probably it's most likely going to lead to more fish or even larger fish so between visual surveys kick net sampling and electrofishing those are all ways we determine if the project success thank you very much and always remember good fishing equals good habitat absolutely <laughs>